Hello and welcome to Psycho Synology, the show that combines psychology and film. I'm Matt, I'm a licensed mental health professional, and I've been working in the field since 2010. On this episode, I'm going to be analyzing The Machinist. The Machinist was originally screened at the Sundance Festival in January of 2004, but it wasn't actually released to wide audiences until 11 months later in December of 2004. The film was directed by Brad Anderson, whose highest rated film on Rotten Tomatoes is 2008's Trans-Siberian at 93%. Now, the protagonist of The Machinist is named Trevor Resnick, played by Christian Bale. Now, Christian Bale, as you probably know, is a master of physical transformation. He looks almost unrecognizable in many of his roles, and The Machinist is no exception. According to some of the synopses available, Trevor suffers from insomnia and psychological issues. So, throughout the course of the film, Trevor is responsible for a major accident at work which results in a co-worker's arm being ripped off. Hey, what'd you do? He's fired from his job. He has some negative run-ins with law enforcement. You realize it's a felony to file a bogus police report? Hey, wait a minute. I think you have some explaining to do. Hey, hey! Has his power shut off at his apartment due to not paying his utilities? You ought to pay your utility bills, partner. Ruins several social relationships due to accusatory or threatening behavior. I'm on to you, Miller. How'd you get into my place? Duplicate keys, credit card, what? This shit's gonna stop! And realizes that he had committed and then forgotten about a hit-and-run incident which resulted in the death of a child. So, does Trevor suffer from mental illness? Let's get into it. Alright, so to diagnose Trevor, I'm going to be using the DSM-5. For those who don't know, the DSM stands for the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders. The 5 means that this is the 5th edition, which is the latest edition as of this filming. The DSM is produced by the APA, or American Psychiatric Association, and this is what professionals in my field in the United States use to diagnose behavior. So there seem to be three popular diagnoses floating around the internet when it comes to this film, and they are schizophrenia, post-traumatic stress disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder. First, let's check out schizophrenia. Now, there are numerous examples throughout the film that could lead someone to believe that Trevor may suffer from schizophrenia. He's paranoid, delusional. It wasn't an accident. Accidents happen out of negligence. This happened out of spite. Hallucinatory, engages in reckless behavior, and his symptoms result in significant work or social life disruption. To be honest, I think you look like toasted shit. Trevor believes that people are plotting against him. Something's happening to me, Stevie. Some kind of plot. That there is someone no one else can see named Ivan who was working against him. That one of his co-workers was arrested by the FBI. I'll tell you one thing. Whatever he did, he sure ain't copping to it. Would you? That a co-worker tried to get revenge on him following an accident at the shop. Moments after you left the shop, someone powered up my machine. With my arm in it. And that there's nothing wrong with him. You want to see the doctor? It's not necessary. I'm fine, really. Though he does have doubts about his sanity at some points throughout the film. So it's shown in the film that these behaviors are relatively recent. Uh, you're not led to believe that Trevor acted this way in the past. Now what's up with you? He used to be all right. He used to have a healthier relationship with his co-workers, and he used to engage in some after-work recreational activities with them like fishing and playing cards. Yo, Res, you up for some cards tonight? Plans. But recently he's lost a significant amount of weight and he started to socially withdraw. So something is definitely amiss. However, according to the DSM, Schizophrenia Criterion C dictates that the behavior described in Criterion A, delusions, hallucinations, catatonia, must persist for at least six months. So although we know that Trevor was involved in a criminal hit and run about a year ago, at which time it seems that his symptoms may have began, the more psychotic or delusional beliefs appear to be a more recent development. And I say that because Trevor meets Ivan during the course of the film, and he's also fired during the course of the film. So I don't think that Trevor actually meets Criterion C, since these behaviors appear to be newer developments. And if they've been occurring for more than the last six months, the film doesn't really give you any evidence of this. So something else that the DSM makes pretty clear, you should also check to make sure that 
there's not some substance use disorder or other medical condition that could be causing these mental health symptoms. And guess what? Trevor has severe insomnia. He claims that he hasn't slept in a year. I haven't slept in a year. And what can sleep deprivation cause? Hallucinations, delusional behavior. So although schizophrenia or maybe some other psychotic disorder is something that I would personally consider if I were to be working with Trevor, I would really want Trevor to get some rest and get some food in him before jumping to any other conclusions. I suspect that with proper rest and a healthier body weight, Trevor's behaviors will return to baseline and his paranoid and delusional beliefs will cease. Okay, but speaking of insomnia, there are a number of other disorders that could actually account for the insomnia. For instance, PTSD. So here are some PTSD criteria that Trevor does meet. Trevor's symptoms seem to have began after a traumatic event. Trevor has recurring, distressful, intrusive memories throughout the film. Trevor has dissociative reactions. Trevor has prolonged psychological distress when exposed to details that resemble the event. Trevor has a powerful physiological reaction when revelations about the event are discovered towards the end of the film. Avoidance of memories, thoughts, places, or objects that are reminders of the event. Dissociative amnesia causing him to not remember key details of the event. You ought to do something about that uh, faulty memory of yours, pal. Persistent negative beliefs about self, others, or the world. Persistent negative mental state. Diminished interest in normal activities. Feelings of detachment or estrangement from others. That you're lonely. Angry outbursts with no real provocation. Reckless or self-destructive behavior. Hypervigilance. Problems with concentration. Hey, who are you sleeping on your own time? I need some help here. Sleep disturbance. Symptoms that last for more than one month. Clinically significant impairment in different areas of life functioning. Not caused by substances or a medical condition. So, as you can see, Trevor likely does meet criteria for PTSD. And it's also entirely plausible that his insomnia is caused by the PTSD, and that the insomnia is causing hallucinations and delusions. But there's one final diagnosis that often comes up when people talk about the machinist. OCD. So after spending some more time researching this, I don't actually think that Trevor meets criteria for OCD in the DSM. Yes, Trevor does spend time throughout the film washing his hands with bleach, and he does seem to have a preoccupation with cleanliness, as evidenced by multiple scenes of him deep cleaning his bathroom, but there are also scenes where he's very messy and doesn't seem to have much regard for cleanliness. And in this case, it could be interpreted that the constant cleaning of his hands in his bathroom are actually symbolic for the guilt that he feels having killed a child. He's trying to wash the blood off his hands, so to speak. And cleaning his bathroom is just another one of the behaviors that Trevor engages in to avoid thinking about the incident and the painful, distressing memories associated with it. The DSM also makes it clear that you shouldn't look at OCD if the behavior can be explained by other diagnoses. And since there's much better evidence to justify PTSD than there is OCD, I really believe that the PTSD should be treated and that Trevor should be allowed to get some rest and some food before looking at any other possible diagnoses. So to review, schizophrenia, Probably not. OCD? Probably not. PTSD? Probably. Now, to me, The Machinist is both parts psychological case study and philosophical slash existential allegory. There are many interesting things that you could extrapolate from this film philosophically, but I'm just going to mention a few that caught my attention. So, more than once throughout the film, you see the book The Idiot. Trevor's reading it, or it's on a table, something like that. So, that's a clue. So, if you know anything about The Idiot, you know that it actually deals with themes like innocence and guilt, light and dark, and how ideas of good come into conflict with what we find in reality. The author of The Idiot himself actually thought that he was suffering from memory issues while he was writing it. He also said that he was having a difficult time recognizing people and he thought that he might be going insane. And the protagonist in The Idiot suffers from disorientation and amnesia, just like Trevor. All right, so themes found in The Idiot can also be found in The Machinist. Take the theme of light and dark, for instance. There are at least three different incidents in the film where Trevor is presented with two different paths. He can go left, which is generally the wrong or bad path, or he can go right, which is generally the right or good path. This is presented as the highway to hell or road to salvation during the amusement park ride scene. During the scene where Trevor escapes the authorities in the sewers, he can go left or he can go right, but there appears to be something scary or challenging that way. There's some sort of monster or menacing force down that tunnel, and it's frightening. And then towards the end of the film, Trevor has the choice to go left to the airport or right back to town. The airport means that he could keep running. Going back to town means that he'll probably turn himself in. 
and finally take responsibility for his actions. Also explored in The Machinist is the theme of guilt. A little guilt goes a long way. Trevor is horrified by what he did, so much that he cannot come to terms with the reality of it. What happened was not his intention, but it happened anyway, and rather than deal with it, Trevor retreats into a fantasy world. But as you see in the film, you can only run from the truth for so long before it destroys you. I know who you are. At some point, if you want to begin to heal, you have to admit what you've done, accept the consequences, and move forward. I'd like to report a hit and run. Okay, a few last thoughts before I wrap up here. It's obvious to me while watching this film that Brad Anderson wants you, the audience, to suffer along with Trevor. The filming style is miserable. Check out the shot during broad daylight. This was obviously shot during a bright, sunshiny day, but it looks like a fucking nightmare. It's also interesting to me that Trevor is never able to sleep throughout the film until the very end when he does get some relief after admitting what he's done and taking responsibility for it. He's running away the whole film, always making the wrong choice, until he decides to take the path to salvation. Now, human beings are masters of survival. We will find a way to survive. Now, in Trevor's case, it could be argued that his hallucinations and delusions are symptoms of insomnia. And insomnia is one of the symptoms of PTSD, as we saw earlier. But it could also be argued that deep down Trevor welcomes Ivan, who is a kind of pseudo alter ego. And perhaps Trevor welcomes the delusional beliefs because they allow him to escape reality. As painful as they are, they are better than accepting the truth. They allow him someone else to blame for what's happening to him rather than himself. This road is tempting because accepting responsibility is often very painful. It's much easier to blame others. So overall, to me, The Machinist is a film about suffering, guilt, bad decisions, and surviving by taking the path of least resistance. And we are all guilty of this. We've all taken the easy way out instead of doing the hard thing, which is usually synonymous with the right thing. The Machinist is a cautionary tale about how much worse things will get if we don't confront our demons. And to that, I say, amen. Yeah, baby. Okay, and one final thought here. I was actually originally thinking that Trevor doesn't have a mental health diagnosis at all while I was watching the film. See, in my line of work, we're always trained to look for other possible explanations for behavior that could possibly account for what's happening instead of jumping immediately to a mental health diagnosis. In Trevor's case, I believe that a lot of his symptoms stem from insomnia, which could be viewed as a medical issue. But after further analysis, as you saw, I do think that there's a good case for PTSD. But you can also get into the chicken or the egg argument. That is, is the insomnia causing the mental health issues? Or are the mental health issues causing the insomnia? I still think that the best course of action for Trevor is to allow him to get some rest and some good meals in him and then reassess his symptoms after that. He could completely recover, or his symptoms may remain. Either way, it would help us to roll things out and get closer to the truth. And that does it for this episode. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more. Are there other movies or film characters that you would like me to analyze? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time on Psycho Synology.